Thank you very much, my brother, Leo Mohammed from the Nation of Islam in the UK. Why are the people of the Middle East rising up against their own leadership? And what is your opinion on the American armed forces and NATO's intervention in Libya? Yes, sir. Thank you very much for the question, brother. You know, I, again, I was reflecting on some of the lectures that we did in Hyde Park some nine, ten years ago. And the fact that I was being influenced at that time greatly by some of the things that we were being taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who, having traveled, uh, you know, into the Middle East and into Africa and into Asia and around the world, he, you know, realized what was happening in many of these countries, that the masses of the people within these countries were really desirous and striving for Islamic states, Islamic expression, because these countries are mostly Muslim countries. This is the reality. Historically, this is where Islam was established by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. There wasn't um, Bahrain and Tunisia and these um, national boundaries. And we have to go back into history to understand where these boundaries come from. These boundaries come about as a result of colonialism, Britain, and other European countries going into that part of the world. And through the process of divide and rule, stealth and deception, dividing up the Arab people, after the destruction of the caliphate and that single authority that held all of the Muslims together, really establishing all of these national boundaries, these kingdoms and fiefdoms, the Saudi royal family and the Bahraini royal family, when you go back and you check out where they're coming from, you'll see that these entities were established by the British. And this is how you would then be able to begin to understand how the masses of the people who are primarily Muslims, people who want to express Islam and to live within Islamic societies, find themselves impoverished, disenfranchised, persecuted, held down, suffering within their own lands, whilst many of those lands are oil rich, the sheikdoms and the kingdoms are beautiful places for foreigners to come and have a wonderful time. Tunisia is a holiday destination, a, a, a beautiful place in Africa, because that's where it is, North Africa. And Tunisia is the kind of place that, you know, British people rush to all the time for cheap packaged holidays. And it's a very short flight away. And they have beautiful sandy beaches and, you know, scented citrus groves and you name it. That's how the adverts will read. You've got legendary cities like places like Carthage you know, which you can read about in your history books. These places are located in Tunisia. And so, foreigners, British and American and other Europeans, go to these places all the time and live in high-rise luxury, really beautiful beaches and the best hotels. But the masses of the ordinary Tunisians, Muslims, suffering in their own country. And the governments having no intention of ever giving these people rights, the rights that these tourists can take for granted, that the people in Tunisia can never expect to be treated in that same way. And you can find the same thing happening in the Caribbean and other parts of the world where, for instance, an island like Jamaica, you can go there, see our people absolutely impoverished while... Europeans are 
got private beaches, living large and you know the most we can do is just try and go and try and sell them a little trinket, some beads or something like that and if we get too close we'll get chased away by a policeman with a baton in our own land. Well this is the same thing that those people were going through. And in uh, December of last year, 2010, just before we come into this 2011, one man got fed up, I think he's 26 year old, a, a young brother who just was just tired of the poverty and the ill treatment of the authorities. He decided to try and burn himself alive. And this is what kicked off all of the uprising within Tunisia. And then this began to spread among the masses of the people. Yes. And, you know, when the people in other countries, because the, it next spread to Egypt, when they saw this, they, they realized for the first time, maybe, that, you know, we can actually do something about this. Because the, the president within Tunisia, Ben Ali, long-time ally of the Western powers and, in, and Saudi Arabia and these other powers who really have no interest in the masses of the people who live within this region and their aspirations they're only interested in pleasing their western paymasters and their western rulers and those that they answer to in the west and so when the people in Egypt began to see what was happening in Tunisia <coughs> I beg your pardon they began to ferment for change and Osni Mubarak in Egypt this man, I mean, he, is, he had sold out so bad that he became an apologist for Israel. One of the most um, hated entities within the Middle East because of what uh, Israel represents to the Palestinians and what they're doing to the Palestinians and the kind of oppression that the Palestinians have to live under in that region of the world. But Osni Mubarak, he was so much in the pay of Israel and the Americans that he was quite prepared as a fellow Arab to close the borders to the Palestinian Gaza Strip and starve the Palestinians within that region on behalf of the Israelis. I mean, brothers and sisters, this thing is it's wicked. This is the kind of thing that you read about in scripture where in a time of betrayal you, be, you, you just won't believe what you'll see a brother do into a brother and I'm using brother now in the context of Muslim to Muslim because he's supposed to be a Muslim and the people rose up and you saw when the people rose up in Egypt how as with um, Tunisia the authorities began killing them and the American government was very quiet about uh, um, Mubarak and his murderous attempts of suppressing that uprising because it's not like the first time the people have tried to stand up they tried all the time they tried strikes they tried all manner of things it, uh, they tried to come at it from an unemployment level they tried it from a sectar sectarian level they tried it from various levels over the years but it was always suppressed, always put down, and the authorities instilled tremendous fear within the masses of the people in the population of Egypt. But finally, because again, you know, Egypt being another tourist destination and people going there, living large, and the masses of the people absolutely out of doors. And mostly wanting to be Muslim. But the leadership as sold out to the Western powers. And the Americans, all, you know, again, brothers and sisters, I'm watching the news and, you know, everybody's talking about the Americans and how the Americans should be an honest broker and tell Mubarak to go. Let me tell you something. The complete opposite. America was the one telling Mubarak, whatever you do, you do don't you go anywhere. You stay there. Because they actually thought that he could ride out the situation. But in the end, they had to turn around and say, okay, it, you know, you, can, you have to leave. Because they realized that it was over, the game is up, and the people were not going to stop. 
going into that square and taking occupation until that man moved out of that country and got his traitor self out of there. And then you see this thing spreading all over the Middle East. But I've got to say this, brothers and sisters. We've got to be careful. Because there's another thing on this planet where these Western powers, they've developed a philosophy which says order out of chaos. And these are the masters of chaos. Another way of saying this is problem, reaction, solution. These people are masters at creating chaos and then taking the order out of the chaos being the ones to come in now and get the spoils and to actually benefit from the chaos and as I said another way to say is problem reaction solution they create a problem ferment the problem until the people react and demand a solution and then they come and offer the solution and so this is also something that we have to watch very carefully because not every one of these Middle Eastern countries that is currently in upheaval and you see uprisings taking place, not every one of them is the same and should be classified in the same. But the Americans and the British and some of these European powers, they're trying to capitalize even within the midst of all of this because what's happening is that the people are trying to throw off these regimes which have sold out the masses of the people in the Middle East and are in the pocket in the pay of Washington and Westminster and uh, uh, um, Paris and these other European capitals and the people are demanding Islam and an and a Eastern expression and an Eastern orientation and a dignified Eastern way of life and the West are trying to maintain the status quo. And everything they do and say on the news, the propaganda, is to hoodwink and fool the people into thinking that they genuinely have aspirations for those people to have democracy, freedom, justice, and equality. They are lying. And one of the things that they're doing, beloved brothers and sisters, is for instance, when you look at Bahrain, the American fifth Navy fleet is based there. And that's why you see in Bahrain, they're killing the people. The royal family ain't going nowhere. In fact, they bring in the Saudis to crush the people and the Americans ain't say nothing. In fact, Clinton, the so-called foreign uh, secretary, goes on the television, makes a statement saying that the Bahraini royal family and the American government are long-time friends and they intend to be friends into the future. Basically sending the signal, keep it going. Business as usual. Don't capitulate. Whatever you do, don't give in to these people because we cannot afford to lose that military base, that base where our fifth fleet is based so that we can patrol those seas in the Middle East and basically eavesdrop and threaten the neighboring countries that they don't like in that region and they cannot afford to lose that base hence the fact that you see murder and mayhem taking place of innocent peaceful protesters in Bahrain but you don't see no task force no UN resolution nothing like that happening with Bahrain because it's in the vested interest of America to keep that regime in power and the only time the regime will move out is when they've had sufficient time to create an alternative regime that will keep the status quo but will look like change. Mm -hmm. But in Libya now, you got armed people. These are not peaceful protesters. These are fully armed people who are killing Libyans in the name of removing Muammar Gaddafi but you see they can organize a task force, they can get a UN resolution, and all of a sudden they're bombing uh, Libya and bombing the infrastructure of Libya to try to get rid of Gaddafi and to establish these, they're protecting innocent civilians. How can you be an innocent civilian with a big weapon in your hand? What happened to peaceful demonstrations? But the Americans, the French, the British, all of them got warplanes flying all over Libya and trying their very best to remove Muammar Gaddafi and to establish this entity that no one seems to know what it consists of 
that's now in Benghazi, in the second city of Libya, trying to attack uh, Tripoli and to remove uh, Gaddafi in a bloody coup. This is wicked, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you why they got to get rid of Gaddafi. I mean, there are many, many reasons. And, you know, don't forget I mentioned before, there are historical reasons they've been trying to get rid of this man for a long time. Did you know that Muammar Gaddafi has financed almost every single revolutionary movement on this planet? All of the African nations and the Caribbean nations who were trying to extricate themselves from colonial rule, it was Libyan and Gaddafi money behind those movements? That's the kind of man he is. And I'll tell you something else about Muammar Gaddafi. He loved black people. And he made the mistake as an Arab of saying that the black man is going to be the future ruler on this planet. And for that reason, many of these Arabs who are racist, I want you to hear me well, because I'm not playing today. These are racist people masquerading as Muslims. They don't like black people, many of these Arabs. And when Muammar Gaddafi said that he, uh, the African man is going to be the future uh, ruler on the planet, they got very upset because they see Gaddafi as a sellout. Muammar Gaddafi is the man in Africa who has been pushing the concept, the uh, Kwame Nkrumah concept of the United States of Africa. Muammar Gaddafi was in the process of establishing and making, coining a brand new currency called the gold dinar. A gold currency, a currency made from gold. A dinar that was to be a currency, a, 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 a single currency for the whole of the African nations. And he wanted to start to trade oil in that dinar and to ditch the American dollar. Gaddafi has got to go. You've got to understand, brothers and sisters, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said to us in his recent press conference that that Libyan crude oil is the sweetest of all the oil in the Middle East. It, it doesn't take much refinement. It's, it's an awesome oil, the one that they found in Libya, and the world craves it. And the Americans and the British and the French and all of them who lied to Muammar Gaddafi and told him that they were his friends at the drop of a hat, as soon as they saw a potential to foment violence and mayhem within his country, to overthrow him and remove him, they jumped at the chance. And the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said he saw Muammar Gaddafi looking shocked, because he doesn't know who he's dealing with. And brothers and sisters, they hate Gaddafi. Some, some people are confused, wondering, well, how comes the Arab League, you know, how comes they sanctioned this? How come they went with the, the, the Americans and these people to attack Libya? Because it's Gaddafi, because Gaddafi is not liked by many of the Arab nations. Because he loves black people, because he identifies more with Africa than he does with a so-called Middle East, an Arab Middle East, he's, he's always identifying with Africa and African people. And as far as he's concerned, Africans are the people who should control that land. And when you heard on the news, Muammar Gaddafi bringing in mercenaries from Africa, you see, that's the lies that they tell. Most of these people, they live in Libya. These are people who work in Libya and live in Libya. They're not mercenaries. Because Gaddafi is not so racist that he won't allow Africans to populate Libya and to be in the army and to be part of his security system. Africans are part and parcel of that whole process. Black Africans and the Arabs hate it. And so that's why they're trying to label the black Africans who are fighting on behalf of Muammar Gaddafi as um, mercenaries and foreigners who have come in to kill the Libyans. These people are wicked demons. Muammar Gaddafi came to power in a bloodless coup a bloodless coup and overthrew a puppet regime that was controlled from the West, stealing the resources of the Libyan people. Libya was such a backward country, it was like a desert. Nothing was there, nothing was happening until Muammar Gaddafi took over and he has built a man-made lake, man-made river, man-made reservoirs. He has made the desert green. The Libyan people 
are some of the wealthiest people in the whole of the Middle East. Their standard of living is higher than most people in the West. Most Libyans are shop owners. The Libyans are not unemployed. They don't want for nothing. They're not in poverty. They've got decent, good hospitals that are carrying out sophisticated operations on their, uh, on, on their constituents every day. Other people travel from other parts of the Middle East and Africa to go to Libya for treatment. This is the kind of place Libya is. And it is a, it is a wicked, damnable lie to suggest and to tell the world that Muammar Gaddafi is killing his own people and he's a wicked man and he's some kind of oppressor. But what they're doing is that they're riding on the back of the popular revolutionary feeling of the oppressed people and trying to ferment the same thing in Libya by financing a group. And Muammar Gaddafi went on the TV and he said, these people are Al-Qaeda. These people are some of those same terrorist entities that have been... Um, sanctioned and have been created by America and the West who they're now um, training, financing backing, creating a, 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 a no-fly zone umbrella so that they can operate with impunity and kill fellow Libyans to try to overthrow Muammar Gaddafi this is the reality brothers and sisters of what's taking place in the Middle East at this time Syria is hated by the West because Syria is an avowed enemy of Israel. Syria, again, the leader in Syria, uh, uh, um, Assad, is a popular leader. He has tremendous support among the masses of the people. But the Americans are in all of the Middle Eastern countries. The British are in there. They've got their agents in there. And they're deliberately fermenting madness. And they've got groups there who are attacking uh, um, soldiers from the Syrian army killing these soldiers and what do you think the soldiers are going to do or the authorities are going to do if their soldiers start getting killed what do you think would happen if we went out tomorrow and started killing British policemen or British soldiers on British soil don't you think that the government would respond and have to kill those people who are trying to do that well that's what's happening in Syria but they're trying to again ferment what they would like the world to believe is a popular revolutionary movement in Syria to remove uh, uh, the government there, when in reality the Syrian government has more backing from the masses of the people and the disaffection is among a small group, but yet they're, they're, they're really pushing them and financing them and trying to make it into something that it really isn't and then all the reports are of hundreds and thousands being shot down in Syria by the authorities. These are wicked demons, brothers and sisters. Wicked demons. In the Yemen, Another great ally of the West. You notice the Yemeni leader, he ain't going nowhere. And the West ain't saying nothing. But people are dying like flies in the Yemen. But because he is a long time supporter of the war and terror, he can sit pretty. This is the reality, brothers and sisters. And we have to understand, they're trying to create a revolution in Iran. But Iran had its revolution in 1979 when the popular revolution of the Islamic people overthrew the Shah who was the puppet of the West. Iran has had its revolution. That is now an Islamic state and the West hate them and they were trying the other day to try and ferment some of these little groups that they've got in Iran because in, in Iran, they've got them all over the place. They've got them all over the place. They're well financed, they're terroristic in their outlook, and they will kill people with a view to try to create madness within the country and hope that it would spread and that they can create that same kind of thing in Iran to overthrow that uh, government that currently rules Iran. So this is what's happening, brothers and sisters. But I've got to tell you, you've got to look at this in proper context. You gotta understand that Master Farad Muhammad's coming is to bring in a brand new world order. And the old world order is fighting tooth and nail to stay where it is. But it's finished, it's on its way out, and when a woman gives birth, brothers and sisters, to a new baby, there is always blood and there is always pain. And that's what you're looking at on a global scale. Don't be afraid of it. 
Don't think that it's always going to be like this and it's never going to change and the devil somehow is going to be able to keep his stuff going. He's finished. But it's going to, it's going to be rocky for a while. Everybody on the planet is going to have to go through some things. Because Almighty God Allah says it's my time now. And he's the one who is stirring up the masses of the people. Because he sent his servant into all of those countries, into that region. The Honorable Louis Farquhar has been all throughout Africa. And he's spoken to the people. He's been all throughout the Middle East and he's spoken to the people. And the people heard. That's why when you've been watching these uprisings, you keep hearing the language. We want a million man march. Million man march. Day after day, they were calling for a million man march. Where do you think that comes from, brothers and sisters? They were directly influenced by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan from that beautiful historic day in the year 1995 in Washington, D.C., when he called for one million and nearly two million came out. That's what's happening on our planet today. It is the introduction, the formation of a brand new world order. Not business as usual, but now the coming in, the establishment of the kingdom of God on earth, where righteousness must rule and will rule. And the final thing I say on it, my beloved brothers and sisters, we must understand that from the United Nations, NATO, IMF, the World Bank, all of these entities, all of these bodies that love to put world in their title, like the, they, they, they really represent the world, these are controlled by America, Britain, and these so-called Western powers, and it's America and Britain are in the forefront of it. These nation, these uh, entities, these uh, um, bodies, the United Nations, the NATO, the IMF, the World Bank, all of them are puppet regimes, puppet entities who are manipulated and are at the beck and call of these powers. And so, you know, don't be fooled. I keep hearing people you know, waiting for the UN to do something. Like the UN are, are some independent body that genuinely represents the nations of the earth. They don't represent the nations of the earth, brothers and sisters. That's why America can do what it does with impunity. Britain and America can do what they do with impunity and nobody's got nothing to say. But as soon as a little small country steps out of line according to their perception, they can get these resolutions passed and then they can send soldiers in or airplanes flying over to bomb the people? Come on, brothers and sisters. Israel murdering people on the high seas, murdering people, dropping munitions on them, bombs, cluster bombs, all manner of things on the Gaza Strip, and even killing people in the West Bank who, is, who up until just recently, they were supposed to be allies with them. And the West don't say nothing. The Israelis are not answerable to nobody. They can just do whatever they want to do to the Palestinians. Starving the people for years. The people are not allowed to have uh, proper medicines coming into their country and proper infrastructure and facilities to build back their homes that have been bombed into smithereens. Not allowed to have cement. I mean, come on, brothers and sisters. And the UN sits back and is powerless, toothless to do or say anything. Come on, man. What do you think you're looking at here? These are entities which are in the pay of satanic forces. And so we need to really understand what we're looking at. Because if we don't, then we may find ourselves being a part of the wicked machinations and find ourselves doing evil to righteous people. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother Leo Mohammed.